Hey, Bruce, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you. How are you today? Ah, oh, perfect. Of course, uh, to, every day is a Java day, right? And it's a good day. <laughs> For us, it is, yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But now, let's see, what was your first computer? My first computer, I think, was a Compaq um, 486 processor. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Long time ago, though, maybe 25 years ago. Interesting, because Compaq was one of the premium brands, you know. I remember, you know, there was on all the tennis, you know, tournaments, there was Compaq uh, ads. Exactly, it, uh -huh. exactly, yeah. And then, you know what happened to them? They they, they, they went bankrupt or something? Or, I or, think they got bought by Dell or HP. I don't remember. Yeah, there was it's some kind of such merch. a long time ago, yeah. And what, what I also remember, Presario, right? This was a kind of Compaq Presario, I think. There was like a specific computer whatever so i know right you exactly exactly and um i think at the time i was writing basic <laughs> that's interesting so what interests me now is um i mean why you started to write basic right so if you got the 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 compact i mean why why you got the computer and what you did with it so what was your first action with the computer so my first action was to do my high school homework <laughs> quicker. Okay. Uh, and so I got the computer in order for me to, to just write my documents, but also I was around maybe 16 years old. So mm -hmm. I was interested in programming, and that was the first language that I picked up. Basic and I think Pascal. Yeah, but look, you are 16, right? So how... A 16 year old get interested in programming so why you would like to start programming so just <laughs> why well uh i was working around with electronics and circuits i wow. was doing uh and gates or gates and i was getting chips to work and i was like you know what there has to be something more than this so that's when i was understood assembly and then i was thinking assembly is okay but i want something a bit more of a language. So once I understood <laughs> how basic can do things, I said, oh, this is, this is fun. Yeah, it's even crazier because, you know, asking why a 16 years old, you know, gets interested in programming, you said, yeah, because uh, I did, you know, my own OR and end gates with electronics. So now the question is, why a 16 years old has interest <laughs> in, you know, uh, solving your own uh, elect uh, end and, 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 and OR gates? Okay. The story behind that story yeah. is that I was uh, actually looking at streetlights uh, and I was wondering, how can I hack them? Not hack them as in mm -hmm. to make uh, them work to malfunction, but just to, okay, how can I improve them? Mm -hmm. So I just did the research to say, okay, you know what, if I could have a solar panel wired up to a street light i could help save my city you know some money and so oh. basically i just understood uh how to to do the wiring and then once i understood the logic gates that's what drove me to programming it was just basically experimentation yeah that's a pretty cool story actually well I remember I had also a fascination with traffic lights as a kid, you know. This was like yeah, the, how they work, but I did, nothing happens with it. But I remember, no, I really wanted to have one. I wanted to build a, a small one, you know, traffic exactly, light. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, this was like uh, not magic, but I really liked them. I don't know why. So um, interesting. So um, yeah, this is even crazier. So I don't know what to ask now because, you know, 16-year-olds uh, <laughs> would like to program because he <laughs> wanted to approve traffic lights. But um, so you got the Presario, and how you got the Visual Basic then? So um, if I remember correctly, the Presario allowed me to install. I don't remember if Windows at the time already had a basic interpreter there, because again, this has been so long. Mm -hmm. But um, after my high school years, and once I went to college, that was when I was introduced to Java back in 1999, 1998. So it was just, you know, wow. Java 1.0. Um, and I was doing my research there at the university. And, and that's where I fell in love with a language. Because okay. I said, this, 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 this is where I need to be for the rest of my life. Now, very good. I, I mean, 
That's crazy. This, and this is I did it. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, what what interests me? Have Have you written everything? Uh, anything uh, interesting or bigger with Visual Basic? You know, beyond Hello World. So what you did with Visual Basic? Not much. Okay. Um, I remember also. So I also had uh, for my high school years and my college years. I had a HP forty eight calculator, Hewlett uh-huh. Packard. Uh, which was a programmable calculator. So whenever I had to do any math, advanced math or physics or calculus, um, I programmed my equations into the calculator. Uh, the calculator also supported basic. Um, and so it was very easy for me just to have, it was, it, it was great because that university allowed students that you could bring you couldn't bring computers to the test mm-hmm. but you could bring calculators so if you were smart enough to know how to program them you could program all your formulas and take your test yeah so okay so you made from a calculator a computer basically right so it was something we look like uh, exactly. a calculator but was actually a computer for you yeah interesting so uh, and um Okay, so you did then Visual Basic all the time, and then Java or was something in between. You remember? So yes. Was, uh, mm-hmm. So um, at the university, that's where I learned about Java. Mm-hmm. Basic was a okay language, but it was nothing to be passionate about. Mm-hmm. It was <laughs> basically something that allowed you to get something done. Mm-hmm. Once I saw. Once I understood and I played around with Pascal, I played around with C, it was something that I said, okay, but this isn't, this, 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 this is okay, but it's, it's not, I'm not really passionate Mm -hmm. about it. Once I understood Java and I understood that, okay, I don't have to worry about memory management, Mm -hmm. then I, I said, okay, this is, this is where I need to be. And that's where I started and continued on. And how you found Java, you know? Is this like... Uh, mm-hmm. So what had happened was that I did research at the university, and the professor at the time was uh, doing parallel and distributed computing, mm-hmm. and he was teaching classes in Java in 1999. And mm-hmm. so I was part of his research team, and mm-hmm. once I understood, okay, Java has built-in support for threads, which again, at that time was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, wow, this is absolutely awesome. So the parallelism uh, drew me in, plus also write once, write once, run anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you fell in love. Okay. So what was your first serious Java program then? You know, or, or serious or something, you know, beyond Hello World? Sure, sure. At the university, I built a book buying and selling program because, as you know, in the United States, university books are expensive. So it was <laughs> called uh, Amazon, right? Your program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> yeah, hired you then. <laughs> and right? uh, I worked together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, <laughs> but um, I created a a basic app that allowed in Java and Java Swing, AWT, Mm -hmm. um, to allow students to buy and sell used books without having to go through the university. Because Mm -hmm. if you go through the university, you have to pay hundreds of US dollars. Um, So I built this app to just basically allow students to sell their own books to each other. Mm -hmm. Was it successful? Uh, I understood later on in my life that once you build apps, marketing is yeah. extremely yeah. useful. Yeah, <laughs> Just creating the app itself is not sufficient. You also need the marketing. But Absolutely. as a student, I didn't know that. Yeah. And uh, design, right? So nice colors, even better. So this is the exactly. most important thing. Exactly. Exactly. You got it. Yeah. And then a question to the expert. Do, do you still remember napkin look and feel? No, no. Napkin. Napkin. Wait, wait, was that one of the uh, swing? Yeah, uh, UI skins that you could put on. Actually, I do remember that. Yes, <laughs> because uh, in my project, it uh, I had a different problem, right? Because uh, the swing looked great if you had the the, the right look and feel, and um, and uh, my managers thought, you know, 
the project is done because all the buttons <laughs> were there and they, they they couldn't get you know the idea that we we still need a backend. I love managers. So, and and what we <laughs> what we use then napkin look and feel. And if yes. you apply the napkin look and feel, the entire app looks broken. Yes. And then it was absolutely obvious, you know, that it is not done. It looks, you know, everything was not right. And, exactly. Um, it looked exactly. like a draft. A prototype. And, um, this was my exactly. hack, actually. So this was a uh, the anti-marketing, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> solutions. Um, yeah. But um, you had also backend back then, JDBC, right? This was a fetch client, I assume. Which exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah, cool. JDBC yeah. at that time was just JDBC one, and mm-hmm. you had to use ODBC to actually JDBC ODBC bridge level two. Yes, exactly. You remember everything then. So yes, <laughs> you had to have the ODBC drivers on the operating system in order for the JDBC part to mm-hmm. even work. Exactly. So, this yeah. is before JDBC. Four, which was you know pure Java drivers. Yeah, the thin driver, so called. The, the yeah. thin driver, exactly. W- which database was it? You remember Oracle? Okay, it was at the time Microsoft Access to get ah, things okay. started. Yeah, Oracle was not really working on Windows way back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yes, it was Microsoft Access as the database. So then you had to use the JDBC ODBC bridge with Oracle. You had two options, right? You could use the native driver. And exactly. uh, you had to install the OCI DLLs or the thin driver, where you could. It's still the case right now, where you can just directly talk, you know, via socket to fifteen twenty one to to Oracle. Exactly. Exactly. So great. But which which university was it? Wayne State in Detroit. Ah, Detroit. Okay, cool. So uh, interesting times. So uh, very early. So I'm really surprised. But 1999, I think it was JDK one one. Yes. 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 I, if if I remember correctly. I remember when I was starting the project for the professor, we were he was using 1.0b, mm-hmm. and by the time it was 1999, I think it was 1.1. Yeah, crazy. So I've, we never met, right? So no. far, no. <laughs> yeah, how is it possible? Because you know, uh, this is like uh, you also attended some conferences. I was a few times at Java One, but uh, interesting. So that that you actually, we, we I was in very similar project as you. This is why I remember. I did also know the Swing, AWT, and Fat clients, thin client, yeah, or whatever. Exactly, the, the, fat the clients, thin clients, the whole nine yards. Yeah, very good. So, uh, what happened afterwards in the university? Any other interesting apps? So, um, after the university, I got the opportunity to continue into research, and I worked for an automotive company. Mm-hmm. And they were working with, at that time, a very new wireless protocol. Mm-hmm. Everybody today knows it as Bluetooth. Uh-huh. Uh, so at that time, nobody knew w- what it was and what it did. And basically, people understood that if anything is wireless, it's going to be Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the opportunity to play around with the technology and being a, a passionate java guy i said you know what there has to be a way for me to use java and bluetooth together mm-hmm. so this was even before android phones mm-hmm. were uh on the market so you know android being the most common java bluetooth implementation this was way before that mm-hmm. so i did my research and what my typical pattern is that i write down copious notes i find things out I researched things and I said, you know what? I should write a book about this. Mm-hmm. So um, in 2003, I wrote Bluetooth for Java. That's interesting. We also share a uh, history. I can talk more okay. about that because in 2003, I uh, also worked for Volkswagen. Wow. And they were also interested in Bluetooth. <laughs> <laughs> and and what we did, we introduced, I, I can talk about that because strangely enough, they were not secret about that. And they allowed me even to talk at conferences. Usually I have NDAs everywhere, but not in this That's project. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <clears throat> and we introduced Java in the cars and uh, telematics and uh, and uh, and um, and what uh, we had a what problem JVM with. What JVM were you using? Yeah, that, that's the interesting part. Uh, so uh, we had to make JVM uh, real time yeah. uh, capable. Exactly. And uh, back then we uh, we got we experimented with Kaffee.org, which mm. is an open source virtual machine um, written actually by a guy who is now at Oracle. Interestingly, so a really nice guy. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, and 
but it was just source code and it was slow, but it had to be, you know, uh, uh, real time. Had to be real and time. And a company, a spin-off of uh, Siemens, I think, yeah. they had, uh, they were in Poland. They actually uh, created a custom JVM for us based on coffee.org, which worked actually. And we had lots of crazy stuff, like, you know, almost like um, um, Craig right now. So, yeah. uh, you know, this CRIC from... Um, uh, from uh, from Azul Systems. Yes. So yes. you know whatever possible. So at 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 build time we use you no know, XML for configuration, but it, we build everything and we wired. So we removed almost like Quarkus, what Quarkus is doing. Removed right. you know all the right. indirections, and then it booted okay. And the interesting part is now it comes the Bluetooth. Bluetooth is one of them, yep. but the idea is using peer to peer. So now if the, there's a car, there's another car. They communicate from car to car. And and then you have like you know uh, intelligence between the cars. So so if there is exactly. a congestion on the road, you know, so you can say okay, now you have uh, three cars, and and you have lots of stories about that, because in the train <laughs> <laughs> from Volkswagen to my city, I met people who did research with wild pigs, and and really? and, and there was a uh, and the, the the funny part is there were students, and uh, the students in this uh, research uh, facility had to catch a wild pig in Germany. Right. Uh, you know, uh, because for some statistical information or whatever. And I say, maybe, you know, the peer-to-peer -peer technology from cars could work with the pigs. If they have small computers, you know, then sure. you can, you know, uh, then you can estimate, you know, how the pigs behave. And, 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 and actually, we had the entire ride from Volkswagen to my city, this Wolfsburg. <laughs> uh, we had, you know, talks about pigs, satellites, and people said that we are crazy because we have transactions, pigs, and satellites, right, in, in Germany. <laughs> so this was actually... So interesting. So and maybe even, I read your book back then because okay. Bluetooth was not that common, but it's already available back then. Exactly. And and, uh, and I searched for resources, resources and I, I, because I remember your name, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure I read it, so uh, I will okay. have to look it up. Uh -huh. awesome. So uh, thank you for the book. <laughs> Helped me 20 years ago. No problem. <laughs> uh -huh. um, okay, go ahead. Sorry for the interruption, but uh, yeah, I had to share because as you said automotive. I was curious. Is it the Volkswagen? I know maybe not the Chrysler, I assume, or something. Okay, Chrysler. go ahead. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so yeah, so um, Bluetooth was something that I thought was awesome because it uh, it enabled the peer-to-peer -peer communications that mm -hmm. Wi-Fi at the time didn't support. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I know Wi-Fi is power hungry. Mm -hmm. uh, Bluetooth is power efficient. Mm -hmm. So I decided, hey, you know what? It'd be really great. Once I, now that I've understood so many things about Bluetooth, it's time for me to document everything to make it accessible. And mm -hmm. that's, and, 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 that's one of the things that I like to do is that I like to make my research accessible to other developers. So mm -hmm. writing the book allows me to say, hey, you know what? I figured all these things out. You don't have to. I went through all, all this hard work. Here's the simple best practices on how to accomplish these specific tasks. Mm -hmm. Which is actually a good approach because if you do it, it's a bit selfish as well because you remember things better, right? So if I write, write something down, I'm forced to rethink actually my because you know if you do something, often it's a chaos. You know, you try, you try, you yes. try, and at the end it works, but you forgot why. Yes. But if you are, but you are forced, you know, to write it down, this is good for the others, but it's also very good for yourself, right? Because exactly, yeah, exactly. So very good. So uh, what happens after Bluetooth? You know, and more and more interesting actually. So, so. After Bluetooth, um, I started uh, doing technical writing for Oracle um, uh -huh. at the time, Sun Microsystems. Mm -hmm. And I was writing articles on their Java ME content on the public website. So you worked for Sun? Yes. So you were a Sun employee? Contractor. A contractor. I didn't expect it that. So <laughs> even because I was also a huge Sun fanboy, I still I am, but now it doesn't make any sense, you know. But <laughs> yeah, those were sad times. Well, <laughs> it's I like how Sun championed Java. Yeah. yeah. Um, they did something which was uh, very difficult at at the time. Mm -hmm. They created Java champion java and got java to where it is today where it's in billions of devices worldwide 
Yeah. Um, and then unfortunately, <laughs> not to talk bad about how Oracle is, but they're a different company. They are not Sun Microsystems. No, but I would say uh, Sun Microsystems is like, you know, a mix of hippies and cyberpunk. You know, this is like uh, an, 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 a, a, a a non-existing, you know, uh, ideology where uh, we try, you know, to make everything open source and uh, exactly. everything popular. And they forgot about, you know, earning money. So yeah. uh, especially <laughs> in Germany. So I told the story several times on the podcast. I really wanted to, to buy a workstation from Sun because I like the workstations. Same and here. I was not able. So they here. say they cannot sell me this because uh, I'm now in the in the consulting sun division and they had no idea. I said, but come on, I really I was not <laughs> able to buy a machine in Germany. I mean, this was uh, this is the truth, right? Yeah. And um, and uh, as Oracle t- took over Sun, I remember the first day and uh, uh, the first year at German conference called OOP, I could actually buy Sun workstations there, right? Wow. So wow. this was the, this was the 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 the, the first thing would happen, but um. I have to tell you, I'm what Oracle is doing right now is actually way better than expected with Java. So uh, what, what happens in all the ecosystem, but in Sun was more broad, more interesting. Oracle yeah. now uh, executes where they have where they think they can be successful, <laughs> and <Yeah>. Sun <laughs> did everything. You know, even strange parts. Uh, for instance, in in the cars, I uh, I used peer to peer technology. Right from uh, uh, it was also uh, partially. Supported by uh, Sun, uh, it was called uh, how it's called uh, Jaxta Pose Jaxta J X T A. I remember that. Yes. Yeah, which crazy. That. There was algorithm like walkers, which are like you know from from Star Wars, the walkers, <laughs> and, and and you could set and, and this was for instance uh, this disappeared. Of course, it is now part of the open source. But J X T A, I think it could be still interesting. But back then, I we did lots lots of research with Jaxta, for instance, and uh, Jaxta sockets and the communication. And such interesting technologies disappeared a bit, but yeah. uh, I was. Uh, but we get GraalVM. We know we have Java twenty two with multi source, exactly. which is crazy. So I would say um, what Oracle does is more important to Java than what Sun did for for, for the business. Yes. What Sun was why we are talking because uh, there were lots of Java developers which are who are really uh, um, 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 how to call it um, who really like Java, right? So yeah. uh, the, 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 this is the outcome. Yeah, and I will add that yes, uh, Sun was definitely a hippie organization. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that really didn't make money well. Um, Oracle is a profitable business. Yeah. Um, and they understand good business models yeah. and they helped Java to really solidify its place in in the enterprise, because enterprises always have yeah. the Oracle yeah. database. So yeah. you can now just bring Java there too. Yeah. But for me, it looks, it looks from outside Oracle more like military. You know? No hippies. It's just, okay, general, <laughs> this, this, this. Okay, we have the, uh, how to call it, the safe harbor statement. And we do this and we do. But, I mean, the outcome is great. So I had lots of conversation with Oracle employees about, you know, employees about the new, the new uh, uh, like Babylon and, and really crazy stuff happening right now. And even, you know, the LLM integration stuff like that happens uh, yeah. will be possible with Java, which back then would be harder because Sun didn't have that many resources at the beginning. No, uh, um, no. Remember, it took a lot, uh, a long time between JDK 1.6 and 1.7, uh, you know, to, to get the new release. Yeah. But uh, Oracle executes very frequently. Okay. Exactly. So so you so you were the technical writer for Java 2ME, right? J2ME. I was one of four, but yeah. Okay. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this so, this was big back then. So J two ME was like crazy, it was, right? It, was, it cool. was it was huge until the iPhone came. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, so um, I was writing for Oracle at the time, Sun Microsystems, uh, talking about how to use mobile Java mm-hmm. and providing basically what are the major use cases about how can I do mobile Java, which again, for me was a passion. And mm-hmm. then soon afterwards, uh, I was made a Java champion. Oh, because you, uh, af- uh w- when was it? Which year? 2010? Probably 2010. Yeah, cool. That long. So I, I, I never met, met you. This is really strange. So we, we <laughs> live in a parallel universe. We share a lot of common stuff. Yeah, we do. And I never met you. This is the first time. So it was actually uh, great. So, uh, thank you for writing me an email. So <laughs> otherwise we would Probably in, you know, meet in a few years from now. Now it's even harder probably, than it was. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So because of your technical writing, you 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 became a Java champion. 
Yes. Uh, and and what happened then? You st- of co- of course you stopped right. 2008 or 2007 iPhone happened and then so the iPhone happened and it was basically the end of mobile Java so two things happened Mm -hmm. one is that mobile Java was traditionally championed by Nokia Mm -hmm. Um, they were a huge participants in the JCP Mm -hmm. process Mm -hmm. um, especially for mobile Java Mm -hmm. iPhone happened Touchscreen revolution happened, um, and basically mobile Java really did not take off. And mm-hmm. then around that time, Google was having Android phones, and they had their fork. Mm-hmm. And so that was where the official m- mobile Java started to die off. Mm-hmm. What was they called the fork? I forgot the name. You remember still? It was uh, these, these, it was Java compatible, but not Java. They were not allowed to call it Java. They were not allowed to call it Java, and I really forgot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I know it is. Um, yeah, I, I have to, to because it was always, you know, this is not Java, but Java compatible. This was even like you know, like a exactly. like, like a sentence from 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 Google. You always had to say because they are not allowed to call it Java, um, but it was Java one six compatible, not one eight. I think exactly, exactly. Okay, so and what what, what you did then after your after iPhone? So, um, after Mo- mobile Java really was not uh, something that I could continue on with, um, I worked in consulting, uh, consulting multiple startups in the United States and a couple in Europe. And I was doing uh, AI research uh, once I eventually came. So this is a very long time skip here. Um, but I eventually got to the point where I was doing natural language processing and speech recognition in Java. Okay. Oh, and what you did before J2ME and this? So there was some consulting or what? It Basically was enterprise consulting. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But for me, enterprise consulting is boring because ah, I've, I've, okay. done it, I've done it so many times. Mm-hmm. It's the same problems over and over. So mm-hmm. it's, it wasn't really passionate for me okay oh uh, but once i got back into research and i was doing uh speech recognition in pure java audio processing in pure java that's when i started to you know get more passionate uh about some of the projects i was working on which year was it for the speech recognition yeah probably Roughly. 2016 uh-huh well also interesting what i used <laughs> What I use uh, for uh, for fun, actually, never for projects. There were two interesting projects. One was called Sphinx, and the yeah. other one, Free TTS. I've used both. <laughs> and Sphinx, oh, hey, I've used both. <laughs> How is possible? This is like you know, like uh, our our uh, brains synced before. It's the like show. we've been separated at birth, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, this is a uh, very very probable, actually. But um, what um, the Sphinx was like commands. You could de- define commands yeah. and you can speak and it will call the command and execute something. It's very similar to Alexa. Yes. But I used that, I think, before 2006. It was very early. And I was surprised that it actually works that well. So, yes. um, yeah. And this free TTS was the other way around. So I could have, you know, nice automation systems. I can speak to Java. It, it just pick, you know, the command, executed the command. And the output I redirected to free TTS. It had a, b- a bit of lag, but there yeah. was uh, several voices actually. And uh, I tried this free TTS last year or two years ago, and still worked. Interestingly, interesting, interesting, pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, what we were doing was that um, researching how to do speech recognition in order to have very accessible applications for basically everybody. So one of the use cases was is how to use a web page hands-free mm-hmm. and to have a microphone to understand okay the input was a, a microphone a jvm record the audio mm-hmm. understand what the user is saying and then using a plug-in to basically hands-free navigation for a web page that mm-hmm. was the major use case so that a person, whether or not if they were disabled or if they were a doctor, they could just go to 
a computer screen, have a web app where it's their application, and just to navigate it with their voice. Was it an applet? At that time, no. This was basically the interactions was going to be either a plugin or a thick client wrapping okay. a web app. So the, then you use JavaFX for the thick client, right? I don't remember. I don't okay. remember. I think it might have been maybe one of the Eclipse wrappers. Because uh, I think we story uh, we share another story, but unfortunately <laughs> this time a little bit different. What I used actually uh, for fun, we used one pixel applet. And what the applets could do, they could communicate with the browser DOM. And uh, the technology was called, I think, live wire. I'm not sure whether the wire, something was live. And uh, you, you can now we have Ajax or steroids, right? Because yeah. what you could do, it, it, you communicate with the applets, uh, with the applet, with the backend. Yep. And you can, yep. in real time, manipulate the DOM. And this was like magic. Exactly. So I thought you did something like this. But then, you know, applets were in, unsecure and from marketing perspective, dead, basically. Yeah. So, uh, But uh, this was a really interesting technology, and there were not many projects we did it. But uh, it was way before Ajax, actually. So then Ajax happened, and I was yeah. like, okay, boring yeah. stuff. I mean, this is like what we did, you know, five years ago. But, exactly. uh, yeah, um, okay. <laughs> interesting. So, um, and the uh, natural language processing, uh, you, you train the models or uh, or what happened in, with Java in the backend or w w how it works is interesting. Okay, so what we did, and I'm trying to remember this project here, uh, we had a team of around maybe 18 people. And mm -hmm. so I was not specializing on the training for mm -hmm. the models. Mm -hmm. I was working hands-on on the Java side and the audio compression. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest issues uh, that that we found out is that uh, you don't compress the audio because once you do, you lose some of the integrity. And then once you want to do speech recognition, it's not as accurate. So you had to basically have uncompressed audio files, understanding what the intent. And that was one of the other things is that we wrote uh, the framework so that we were working with basically understanding the intention of the user. Mm -hmm. Once we could understand what their intent was, then the NLP side was quite easy. We could mm -hmm. just, we were actually using some of the, at the time, uh, hugging face libraries. Back then? Uh, yeah, in 2016, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So you, yeah, you are one of the pioneers, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Java, no, no kidding, man. But hugging faces are huge right now. Eight years later, yeah, yeah they are huge right now. Yes, <laughs> yes, I'm speechless almost. So <laughs> you used uh, Java Audio for compression? Yes. Uh huh. Awesome. Yes. So two different ways. The major thing is having uh, the connection to the microphone, detecting mm -hmm. the presence for the microphone, mm -hmm. grabbing the audio. Didn't really compress it. We were using WAV files. Once we mm -hmm. started adding compression, it introduced artifacts into the sp speech recognition. Mm -hmm. Once we were able to understand the intent of the user, then we were basically doing entity recognition. Because again, mm -hmm. once you understand, okay, this user wants to do this particular mm -hmm. task, mm -hmm. once you know that, you can pull the entities out to say, okay, what are the nouns? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, map that to what is on the web page, and then basically let them control mm -hmm. what they want to do on the web page. Mm -hmm. Very well, I can say now, very easy. <laughs> yeah, it happens uh, on the on the desktop, or there was a backend component as well. This we it was wrote for both, so huh? it could happen on the desktop with. A, a thick client wrapper, but it mm -hmm. could also happen interfacing with a backend to send events to the browser. And how much Java was in the pro entire project? I mean, was everything Java or was it Java and C++ or what way to know? It was Maybe. basically everything Java. It was basically everything Java. It's crazy. So we had a uh, full stack, uh, um, how to, not LLMs, uh, what, how to call your model, NLP models, right? NLP so models, N NLP, yes. NLP model, pure Java. Yes crazy fun yeah. stuff because uh, what i always wanted to, to know now, right from from the researcher so if you you would switch to python i mean it will execute slower 
<laughs> or also make it too slower, right? So, so yes. what I'm wondering is um, because we're talking about about you know money in the cloud and 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 energy efficiency and and Java is really I mean unbeatable almost. Uh, the, 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 yeah. uh, I think uh, C, ADR, ADA, and Rust are just uh, more efficient than Java. Anything else basically is slower and and uh, more um, uh, energy uh, hungry than exactly. than Java. So um, so I always right now it happens a lot that you know we are converting from Python back to Java to have a pure Java um, absolutely um, model integration. This is why I ask you about the models because it interests me and uh, and and also what I like you now the idea that that you use pure Java back then eight years ago with hugging phase. I mean this is crazy. So after Fun ten stuff, years, <laughs> so hey after ten years you have to wait two years. You you are now you know hot again because you know what you did ten years ago now becomes reality again. Exactly, exactly. So um, late last year, um, early last year, I was. So wait doing... a second. This is uh, we will have to split anyway because uh, uh, I think we will dedicate one epi- as cliffhanger one episode just about. Chat GPT and your book, right? So, okay. but right now, forget your book. It is really great. Everyone has to buy it. I bought it, so okay. uh, I have it. I arrived uh, a few days ago. A blue book. Yep. Java and Chat GPT. So everyone has to buy it. At least one copy uh, for, uh, for you know for <laughs> fail over reasons. Two copies would be better, right? So, um, <laughs> but uh, but um, so you did the, uh, the the language processing browser. Was it somehow? I oh, by the way. The name of the JVM is Dalvik. I remember that. Dalvik. That's exactly Dalvik. what that was. D A L V I K, and this was the the uh, first Android JVM which was Java compatible. But uh, uh, Google was not allowed to call it Java, so everyone said this is Dalvik. But exactly. uh, it's like Java, but it's not Java. So it was Dalvik. Okay. Yes. So I, I, the entire time I, I tried not to remember this is Dalvik. Okay. Now. Um, so this was the um, so was the project successful? Does what was the performance? So I'm interested in the in the t- was the performance real time or was it uh, what was the latency? So or, you know? the performance was, I would say that uh, based upon tuning things for the specific use cases, because once you say support everything, mm-hmm. uh, performance is horribly slow. Mm-hmm. But once you say support these specific use cases, we were basically allowing people uh ordinary people to um i think one of the test cases we were using was someone to navigate a customer portal and to mm-hmm. just basically rather than to type in i think i think one of the use cases was a grandmother wants to be able to fill out a form for tech support mm-hmm. and she doesn't want to actually type things in she just wants to say my name is Mrs. Tompkins, I have a problem with my e- electricity. Let her use natural language to mm-hmm. explain what her problem is and to get tech support. So the response times were actually quite well, maybe mm-hmm. under a second, where okay. uh, if they speak, we could understand, grab, understand the intent, fill out the form for her, and then allow her to submit. Okay. So right now would be maybe 100 milliseconds with no modern Java and modern hardware. And right exactly. now, eight years later, it would be instant, better Ex- than... Exactly. Nearly instant. Nearly instant. Yeah. What Was it successful? Uh, as most research projects, no. Ah, because this was recent. it needs okay. funding. Okay. It needs okay. funding. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, anything else you did with uh, models? Uh, called not ai i call it ai i don't know how to call it uh, uh machine learning maybe oh machine learning is a better term uh anything else you did ml back then until now i may have did some i, I remember trying out sphinx and i remember there were some issues that we had with sphinx but again you're having me to access old databases in my head that I haven't used. Yeah, I, 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 I thought you know you prepared for AX. You know what you, to expect. You know this is the, uh, the the old stuff is the interesting because we can lo- learn a lot from the past, right? So uh, yes, how often I I uh, reapply you know old tech from ten years ago to new project and every everyone is surprised. Wow, from from no from where you know it is. Like, yeah, this was either from Genie or from Jackstar. Everything is reinvented with different names, right? So. Um, 
And the best one now, if you know big. Monolith, you are back in game. But uh, I never did something different. You know, I, I ignored microservices completely. I called, you know, I renamed my Monolith to microservices, and now I'm renaming the microservices to Monolith. But actually, I still have, you know, the old five to ten applications without any any change. So that's um, awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this is the skill of renaming and marketing, of course, right? Of course, marketing. Marketing is the Remember, best Remember, marketing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> except uh, 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 Napkin. So this was the, and sometimes marketing is too much if you talk to managers because they think, you know, everything is done. So project is over. Yeah. We deliver. <laughs> cool. Um, so, and, and between then and now, something interesting, you know, in your Java world, I'm really curious now what you else did because it becomes more and more interesting. So this, I'm really surprised with 2016 hug, hugging phase and full stack Java and, and browser integration. This was, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, right Fun now stuff. I would say, okay, but back then, eight years ago, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to uh, think, were there any other major things that I was doing before I uh, was doing uh, chat GPT? That was pretty much it. Um, so you had eight years then after research was so successful, eight years vacations or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, also technical writing. So uh -huh. um, I um, also did a small uh, time writing for Linux magazine. So mm -hmm. um, last year, you might see uh, one of the articles that I wrote. Uh, it was just basically how to do... Um, the, the the term is called mesh VPN, uh -huh. but it's is uh, essentially a reverse VPN. So traditionally, VPNs allow you to be at work, and then uh, well, you can be at home mm -hmm. and to connect to resources at your office. You could be at at the hotel room and to do the same thing. Mesh VPNs work. The opposite way. Mm -hmm. Basically, you can connect in, into your home securely, and you will have access to all of the resources of your home, mm -hmm. and you don't have to open a port on your firewall. Mm -hmm. So um, I wrote a simple article of how to do a dog monitor, a pet camera, where it's like I am at the office, but I want to see what is my dog doing right now? So another technology which is hot right now. I, um, there's a company I think it's called Tailscale. The that's the technology that I used. <laughs> <laughs> right now, everyone talks about Tailscale, and you did it when five years ago again. Or <laughs> <laughs> I started working with the technology uh, maybe two, three years ago, mm -hmm. and I I uh, I did the article for the Linux magazine last year. Yeah, because if you look around, the Tailscale company becomes more and more interesting, and they uh, say, okay, it is very easy to manage, you know, uh, lots of machines from, and, 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 and it is very easy to use. So maybe you can briefly explain what is behind the scenes, because, you know, this is now every Java developer is also interesting how to manage remote machines and what how Tailscale or Mesh VPNs are actually working. So could you summarize that? Yeah, so basically it's, the best way that I can explain it is that um, it allows to create a VPN mm -hmm. with the nodes that you say that you want to participate in the VPN. Mm -hmm. The major driving point is that you do not have to open up a port in your firewall, which is one of the most insecure things you could possibly do. Mm -hmm. It works very much like every other VPN and you get all of the tunneling and the security mm -hmm. without having to set up hardware network inf infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And this is why Tayska is maybe so so popular right now because it's a new thing and convenient to use, right? Exactly, and it is free. Developers mm -hmm. love free. Yeah. Okay. So uh, another crazy technology. I, I was not, you know, uh, I didn't thought we talk about today, but. Uh, then you said after that, there was nothing interesting except uh, ChatGPT, right? Yes. So the question to you, you saw the, you know, how to call it, it on the horizon. So this will happen or you were surprised by success or you followed, you know, OpenAI and you knew what they are doing and they say, okay, now it's time to, to, to do it a little bit more. So how you, so uh, how you discovered ChatGPT? I discovered it. Once I had heard about, there's a tool 
mm-hmm. that the New York public school system mm-hmm. announced very early on mm-hmm. they were preventing students from using it because it was allowing them to cheat on Ch- their Ch- homework. Zero, right? Yes. Ch- yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And so I said, huh, I've been doing natural language processing for a while now, and I want to see how well this can understand natural mm-hmm. language. Mm-hmm. And once I tried it out and I saw that it could understand and it can also generate very human-like mm-hmm. responses, I said, wow, this is a, a game changer. Mm-hmm. And uh, I discovered OpenAI by accident because, uh, not by accident, Elon Musk created the company. Yep. And I was interested in what happened because back then the idea was, you know, AI is dangerous to the world, so ma- let's make it open source so that, you know, this was 2013 almost or some 10 years ago, it was a long time ago. Yep, yep. And I say, okay, the, who knows, you know, maybe we live in simulation or whatever other theories there are, you know, mm-hmm. but uh, this AI dangerous to the world and company, interesting. And I followed it a bit and then it just blew up. This was the same company. And I say, okay, th- interesting. I, I didn't suspect... Um, uh, I didn't expect actually that it was going to be, you know, successful, but it was crazy successful. And the entire thing is even more interesting because the chat GPT technology was the entire, it was already available, right? but the model was there, but was not fine tuned and there was no UI. And with the, you know, chat user interface marketing again, marketing overnight, yes. it yes. become crazy successful, but just because of the user part, interface part, be- before then, maybe, you know, the the uh, the the chat GPT was uh, even you know maintained in hugging phase and no one cared. Yeah. But with the user <laughs> interface, it w- became very popular overnight. Exactly. And the other thing is that I remembered her- hearing about the company once I saw Dali two, mm-hmm. which was before GPT three, and I mm-hmm. saw it and I was like, well, the images are okay. Mm-hmm. They're not all that great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've seen improvements in the whole space where the images are pretty good yeah okay and then you thought how to integrate with java right or what what is java role there exactly the major thing that i saw is that once i did enough research with the open ai apis and i was going through their documentation and i was trying things out i said you know what java developers need a way to programmatically access these APIs and to just do their job. And I assume this is also described in a book. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So, and what I would like to do is a bit early, stop here because I wanted to read your book, but because of my crazy deadlines, I couldn't, (laughs) but I would like. No so problem. I would like to read your book. I bought your book. It's a good one. So I I, I look at this. So it's a, I, I would say short read, right? So this is a lots of examples. So it's yep. not, not I will manage to, until the next time. And then I can ask more intelligent questions about your book. And I would like to re-invite you back and, you know, talk um, just about your book. Sounds and fantastic. I will put your the book already to the show notes. So if the listeners would like, you know, they can buy it right now. Great. Then uh, read it until next time. And they will hear you know about more depth conversation about the book, right? So this could be a better idea. I think so. Okay, sounds great. Perfect. So um, maybe you know where people can find you on the internet, where they should buy the book by Amazon or directly by you. So now oh. it's marketing time, you know. And uh, <laughs> what's your Twitter handle, Blue Sky handle, all your handles, and uh, yeah. Where people okay. can find you. Mm-hmm. So you can find me on the website, which is Java Chat gptbook.com mm-hmm. and on twitter i am at java chat gpt ja- you are the java chat okay it's not, I'm, the, not, I'm the java chat guy you are the java <laughs> chat i had a, a conversation there was the java agent he cared about you know uh uh the shy he he uh he uh he uh was his area were debuggers and java agents so his his page was java agent and now i have the java chat you know this is like uh <laughs> Perfect. Exactly. All about so marketing. So I'm really, man. I'm really. It was a great conversation, and I amazed to know what you did. And uh, we never met. It's even, even crazier. And we probably we walked past each other in San Francisco at Java One and never yeah. knew it. <laughs> yeah, and I did. I, and I do the. I always did the uh, the enterprise stuff, and I like it. And you find it boring. This is the reason, right? Yes, because yes. you never attended my sessions. I got the you know the create, read, update, delete, hello world. I saw this you know already a thousand times. 
<laughs> but uh, I surprised that maybe I attended your session. Which session? You you were speak at Java One? Ah, <sighs> I don't think I spoke at Java One. Oh, okay. I think I this might is... have spoken at some of the other off conferences though. Okay, because I was only I only attended Java One and I listened to all interesting sessions, but I couldn't remember you. But if you had a session about Java ME or Java and AI, I, I would I would attend your session for sure. So, um, yeah. Thank you a lot, and Thank see you, you next time, Adam. All right, I'll see you later.